Unraveling the secrets, is there evidence for new physics? In recent years, the field of physics has witnessed a surge in exciting discoveries and unanswered mysteries, raising the question of whether we have evidence for new physics beyond our current understanding. This video aims to explore the existing evidence that suggests the need for potential new physics phenomena. By examining anomalies in cosmic phenomena, particle physics, and the unification of fundamental forces, we can gain insights into the compelling evidence that points toward the existence of new physics. We frequently hear physicists claim that our understanding of the universe is flawed. It's a common argument used to justify new experiments, such as a better detector, a new telescope, or a larger collider. At the same time, they'll tell you that no matter what they try, they can't locate any evidence that contradicts their best extant hypotheses. So, what exactly is going on? Is there proof of new physics or not? That is what we will discuss today. Assistant Professor Carrie D. Petrillo called for a larger particle collider in a recent CERN Courier piece. She wrote that we know the conventional model does not represent the entire cosmos. Experiment results and theoretical concerns point to the existence of new particles at the multi-TV scale. TV is an abbreviation for Tera Electron Volt and is a unit of measurement for energy. The new collider would test the multi-TV scale. At the television scale, there are no observations or concerns. Another example, in a recent press release, Jefferson Labs' Jim Fast was cited as saying, we know there are some things wrong with the standard model. He said this to explain why we need a new experiment to detect the electron's weak charge. It begs the question of how he knows that. Is it the absence of observations or concerns? This has been going on for a long time. Already in 2018, Nigel Lokier, then director of Fermilab, told the BBC that we need a larger collider because everyone believes there's something there. There must be new research based on a straightforward computation of the Higgs mass. That is, of course, incorrect. To begin with, no one has calculated the Higgs mass. It is an unrestricted parameter. It is determined through measuring. Di Petrillo, Fast, and Lokier have one thing in common, they are all experimental particle physicists. Most experimentalists in this sector simply rehash theoretical ideas. If pressed, they will state that they do not accept what the theorists claim. But if it means money, it appears they're willing to suspend their disbelief. So let's take a look at the most prevalent reasons for why there must be new physics that justifies all of this spending. It's a big list, and the universe's heat death is only 10 to 100 billion years away. So we have just chosen the most prevalent allegations for today. That is the mass of the Higgs boson, quantum gravity, dark matter and dark energy, neutrino masses, and the universe's absence of antimatter. We'll go over them one by one, beginning with the mass of the Higgs boson. We presently employ two distinct theories in the foundations of physics. The first is Einstein's general theory of relativity. Yes, it's the same guy. Einstein taught us that gravity is actually caused by the curvature of spacetime. The other theory we utilize in the foundations is a quantum field theory dubbed the standard model of particle physics. It collects all known elementary particles as well as the three forces that hold them together, electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. In the standard model, one of those particles is the Higgs boson, and its mass is the third parameter. This means that you measure it and then use it to make additional predictions. Why do particle physicists keep harping on about it when there's nothing wrong with it? We believe it is a mistake comparable to the one that once led physicists to assume that black holes did not exist. They're mixing up mathematics with physics. Carl Schwarzschild was the first to describe black holes. In his equations, a singularity exists at the horizon of a black hole. The presence of a singularity does not imply that the mathematics is incomprehensible. It signifies that some mathematical operation returns the value infinity. This seems to imply that black holes are a mathematical possibility that does not exist in reality. However, 
It was discovered that the singularity at the horizon is an artifact of the mathematical description given by Schwarzschild and has no physical analog. So there is no physical problem at the black hole horizon. This becomes clear when you compute what you can truly measure. Consider what you'd feel if you passed a black hole horizon. There is no answer. The horizon does not exist in physical form. The only issue is that you can only cross it one way. In Schwarzschild's equations, some mathematical quantities appear strange, but when you question what you can measure, everything becomes normal. That is why we no longer believe there is something strange happening near the black hole horizon. A singularity exists in the center of a black hole, but that's another tale. Another common argument is that the Higgs boson is distinct from the other particles in the standard model. That's accurate, but just because something is different doesn't imply it's incorrect. In any event, the notion that there's something wrong with the mass of the Higgs boson is what led to all those incorrect predictions for new particles at the LHC, such as supersymmetric particles, additional dimensions, gravitons, and so on. So, the next time a particle physicist tells you there's something strange about the Higgs boson, remember that they've already duped us. Let's move on to something more engaging. As previously stated, the foundations of physics are currently based on two distinct theories, general relativity and the standard model. Unfortunately, these two hypotheses disagree. This is due to the fact that the particles in the standard model have quantum characteristics. They can, for example, be in two places at the same time. However, because general relativity is not a quantum theory, the gravitational field of those particles cannot be in two places at the same time. This makes no logic and is simply mathematical nonsense. What we need to address this dilemma is a theory that gives gravity quantum properties, or, since Einstein stated that gravity is ultimately an effect of space-time curvature, a theory that offers space and time quantum properties. It's commonly referred to as quantum gravity. It is also believed that quantum gravity theory would resolve the singularities that exist in general relativity, at the Big Bang, and inside black holes. Because the space-time curvature in these instances is quite great, the quantum fluctuation of the geometry should become crucial, and we know that our existing theories are flawed in this regard. There is no quantum gravity theory. However, particle physicists rarely discuss this. It's for a straightforward reason. Gravity is an extremely weak force when compared to the electromagnetic and nuclear forces. Gravity cannot be measured when single particles, such as those in the standard model, are considered. Their gravitational force is simply insufficient. Gravity can only be measured for large objects since it differs from the other forces in the standard model. It cannot be neutralized, thus it accumulates. When enormous chunks of stuff are formed, the nuclear forces become undetectable, and the electromagnetic force normally becomes rather weak, unless you're sleeping in an MRI machine, which is why you shouldn't bring firearms near those things. That is why measuring quantum effects of gravity with single particles is impossible. You choose something larger. Then there's dark matter. We have a difficulty if we accept Einstein's general relativity and all of the particles in the standard model. It's only that these two together don't accurately describe many astrophysical observations. Physicists are attempting to overcome the challenge in two ways. One option is to introduce new particles. That is the concept of dark matter. The issue with dark matter is that the idea is so adaptable that it may be applied to anything. Astrophysicists modify the dark matter hypothesis whenever an observation does not match a prediction. Elon Musk is one of the universe's least known problems, but I wouldn't be surprised if dark matter is eventually used to explain that as well. Another explanation for the gap between prediction and observation is to alter general relativity. This is referred to as modified gravity. However, Particle colliders and particle detectors cannot be used to test changed gravity. A generator cannot be tested in the solar system because the changes are only noticeable far away from large huge entities like our sun. That is why particle physicists are opposed to modified gravity. They are unable to profit from it. 
They like the idea that the observations are explained by dark matter particles because it is what they do, but no particles are aware of this. Specifically, such particles that can be created or measured in one of the next particle colliders detectors. The problem is that, even if dark matter is formed of particles, which it may not be, there is no reason why it should be a sort of particle that can be created or measured with the next greater particle collider or experiment. If you bring it up, they'll tell you that, well, at least you can rule out certain possibilities. At the very least, this allows us to rule out some possibilities. So the observations commonly attributed to dark matter are a real issue that must be addressed in some way. However, modifying the conventional model is not always necessary, especially at the energy that the next larger collider may test. What is the deal with dark energy? The discoveries attributed to dark energy are readily explained by a cosmological constant, which is just a constant of nature and story. A natural constant is the best explanation there is. Some theorists claim that the constant is not a constant, but rather a quantum field composed of particles, which can be detected using a particle collider. But that's an overly contrived hypothesis, and there are infinitely many of them, so testing them is an unpromising technique. Let us now discuss neutrinos, which are possibly the most perplexing new physics argument. The standard model includes neutrinos as one of its components. They come in threes. Neutrinos are electrically neutral, as the name implies. They interact relatively rarely and are difficult to measure since they have no electric charge. We've known for about 20 years that neutrinos have masses, and a Nobel Prize has been awarded for it. As a result, looking up the standard model on Wikipedia will tell you that, of course, neutrinos have masses. However, many theoretical physicists believe that neutrino masses constitute physics beyond the standard model. But here's the reasoning. We know neutrinos have masses, but we don't know how they got them. The problem is that other particles, like as the electron, have left-handed and right-handed variants. The electron's mass is determined by an interaction between its left-handed and right-handed versions and the Higgs boson. We can't do it with neutrinos because we've only ever observed the left-handed variety. There are three methods for assigning masses to neutrinos. The first possibility is to simply assume that right-handed neutrinos exist. We haven't seen them yet since they're too hefty. The second possibility is that neutrinos differ from electrons in that the right-handed and left-handed versions are identical. This is known as a Majorana particle. You can then couple two of the neutrinos we already know exist to the Higgs, and they gain masses. If neutrinos were Majorana particles, they may undergo a sort of radioactive decay known as neutrino-less double beta decay. This is what the cation experiment is looking for. It hasn't seen anything yet, but it has just recently begun gathering data. The combination of the preceding two is perhaps the most popular alternative, in which case the right-handed neutrinos are too heavy to be created at the next larger particle collider. The third alternative is to make a mass out of the left-handed neutrinos and the Higgs without producing the major Majorana by connecting it to a pair of Higgs. This does not require any additional physics, but it does cause a mathematical challenge in the standard model. At high energy, it would then degrade. This could imply that new particles are forming at those high energies. However, the energies required for this are once again much above the capabilities of the next larger collider. This suggests that the problem with neutrino masses is identical to the problem with quantum gravity. We know there has to be a solution, some new physics, but it becomes necessary at energy so high that they are orders of magnitude away from even the next larger collider. However, there are other trials that could throw light on the situation in both circumstances. Another reason we frequently see particle physicists' names used to argue for new physics is the supposed conundrum of the universe having more matter than antimatter. They believe that the cosmos should have been created with equal proportions of both so that they utterly annihilated one other, leaving nothing but radiation left, which is clearly not what we see, unless you are radiation, there's no reason why the universe couldn't have begun with equal parts matter and antimatter. 
Non-experts may find this argument persuasive since they have heard that we know something about the symmetry between matter and antimatter from Dirac's work. That is correct, but all Dirac showed us was that antiparticles exist. His revelation makes no mention of how many of those particles exist in the universe. So, when it comes to the matter-antimatter asymmetry, nothing needs to be explained in the first place. Particle physicists have also claimed that discovering violations of specific types of symmetry such as CP symmetry will aid in explaining this. It won't, no matter what they measure about CP symmetry, because our existing theories require beginning values for the quantity of different types of matter in the early universe. To summarize, the mass of the Higgs boson, dark energy, and the matter-antimatter imbalance do not require any further explanation, let alone new physics. However, we do know that new physics must exist. Two compelling theoretical considerations are that we lack a theory of quantum gravity and that we do not understand the genesis of neutrino masses. We also have compelling experimental evidence to support our belief in new physics. These are the observations that are commonly attributed to dark matter. Even if dark matter isn't the best explanation, we still need one. However, we have no reason to believe that any of these new physics will be detected in any of the detectors presently under construction or at an exascale collider. If a physicist says otherwise, it's because they're making things up and assume you don't know any better. No doubt, new physics is exciting, but as the saying goes, you must first master the laws before you can break them. In conclusion, the accumulation of evidence from multiple branches of physics strongly suggests the need for new physics beyond our current understanding. The anomalies observed in cosmological, particle physics, and astrophysical realms demand explanations that extend the boundaries of the standard model and general relativity. Although much work remains to be done, the pursuit of new physics promises to enrich our understanding of the universe and unravel its deepest mysteries.